Good morning, Kampala Community Church and all our dear friends. Happy Father's Day. Today is a Father's Sunday, and so we celebrate our fathers and the fact that God has given us fathers. Today I want to talk about the fatherless generation. And to talk about this, I want to share, first of all, some scriptures from the Bible that I feel will encourage you and me. Uh, Proverbs 23 Verse 24, 25 says, The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. What does this mean? If you are a father and a mother, you have a child who is righteous, who fears God, who does what is right. You are filled with joy because of this child. But the fact is, this child will not just fall from heaven and become righteous. Who does what is right? It takes you as a parent, as a father, to be responsible in the life of this child, teaching them and guiding them to become what they become in the end. As Genesis 18, verse 17 to 18 says, The Lord said, Shall I hate from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. And when you read verse 19, it says, For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Now, God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I said, I cannot hide this from Abraham. For the relationship I have with Abraham, I cannot hide this from him. Why? Because Abraham was going to direct his children and his household in the ways of God. He needed to know what God loves and what God does not love what would bring destruction to his household and tell them, no, you never do A, B, C, so that they get to know the truth. He teaches these children the right direction. God will keep his promises in the life of Abraham. Our success in life, we can achieve our victories, our success, by guiding our children in the right direction or in the way God wants them to go. And that's very critical for all of us. So this is very important as we talk about Father's Day. Um, Psalms 78 verse 5 to 7, it says, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, the, ch the children who could be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Now, this is very, very, very important to us as fathers. Whatever God has given to us, taught us, whatever lessons we've learned in life, whether it's about following God, prayer, fasting, uh, making money, managing money, taking care of others. These lessons God has taught us. We need to teach these lessons to our children as fathers. And once we teach them to our children, they will teach them to their children. And even to their children not yet born. Children who are not yet aware, who have not even come on, on planet Earth. They will know the direction that God wants them to know because their parents, their fathers played a right responsibility. So we have a task as fathers, a responsibility as fathers to do something very important. And I want to say from that, being a father goes beyond making a woman pregnant. It steps beyond being a biological parent of a child. To be a father is being responsible for the welfare and well-being of a child. Hallelujah. 
you are responsible for the welfare and well-being of a child and the upbringing of that child into a responsible person until they become responsible people, knowledgeable of the truth. You never remove your hand from them as a father. You have that responsibility to train them, to teach them, to guide them, to inspire them, to go the right direction God wants them to go. If we don't do that, we bring catastrophe and dangers to our families. Uh, Isaiah 43, verse 26, 28 says, Review the past for me. Let us add you. The matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned. Those I sent to teach you rebelled against me. So I disgraced the dignitaries of your temple. I cons consigned Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. So there were the first fathers. There was a first father with responsibility who never did the right thing. And because of that, the children are reaping a wrong harvest. They are not getting what they are meant to get. There are fathers here today, fathers all over the world, who are not playing their responsibilities as fathers. They are not doing what they, are, they need to do. They have become rebellious, and their rebellion is passed to their children. And because of that, we are bringing destruction on our nation, in the world, in, on our families, and we need to change what we are doing. And this change is what God is pursuing in the fathers today and all over the creation he made. He says, Malachi 4.6, And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Some trans translations say, with a curse. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, the hearts of the children to their fathers. Or else, if that does not happen, destruction is going to come on planet Earth. It's going to come on our family. It's going to come on our city. It's coming on our nation because we've not played our roles as fathers in the lives of children. And so the children become wild and they start doing things they are not meant to do because we've not done what we are supposed to do as fathers. So this is very critical for us. God wants to get our hearts back as fathers, to be reconnected with our children. And if this can happen, great things are going to happen in the lives of children. When you go around our country today, and just even in our church, I would say 80% of our children have not experienced the love of a father. And this is true all over the country. Fathers have become absent fathers. They are not there in the lives of their children. And this is very sad, the way it is going to, it's happening. And Lamentations 5, 1, 3 says, Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widows. Honestly, the truth is this, that we've become fatherless, orphans, even, even for those whose fathers are still alive. You never see your dad. And your dad does not do what they are meant to do. And your dad does not do what he's meant to do as a father. So to be a father, I want to talk to you as a father. To be a father is responsibility. It means you are taking on responsibility. One, number one responsibility, you are a role model or an example to your children. How are children going to learn? from you when you're not in their family. You are not in your own family. How can they learn from you when you're not in their lives? God tells Abraham he will teach his children to follow him. 
to follow who? God. Amen. Two, as a father, you are a provider. It is very sad today that there are people who have grown up and they get married and their mind, they are thinking about a wife to be the provider. I've encountered a weird man that marry, they say, I want a woman who, is able, who will be able to, to provide for her home. That is weird. Uh, t- First Timothy 5, 8 says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So if you are not a provider for your family as a man, as a father, you are worse than an unbeliever. You don't qualify to even follow Christ. You don't qualify to be a father. So you, you as a father, you are the provider for your family. Number three, you are the protector of your family. As a father, God has called you to watch over your family, to keep your family safe, whether it is physical safety or spiritual safety. You are the covering for your family. Once you disappear from the lives of your children, even the life of your wife, your family loses the, a very unique covering, and so you are abandoning your children, you are abandoning your family, which is not right. Uh, number four, you are a teacher. You are a teacher. Listen to this, Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 4. It says, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning. So that, so do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he told me, and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Hallelujah. Amen. This is very, very, very important for us as fathers. You look here. The person writing here is Solomon. He says, I too was a child in my father's house. And my father told me. He told me to do A, B, C. And he's also teaching his children, telling them, obey my instruction. Pay attention and gain my instruction and gain understanding. Fathers, let me ask you a question. How will your children learn when they don't hear you guiding them in the right direction? How will they learn when you don't give them clear instruction on how to live life? Children are looking for direction. Whether it is, man, whether it is following God, uh, managing money, making money, being social, caring for their, for their families how to care for their families, and children learn more by observation. You will teach your children by helping them to observe you and see what you do daily. And that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child. Fathers, train up your children in the way they should go. Train them in the way they should go, whether in all aspects of life. Education, take them to school. Don't stop on education. Teach them to follow God. Don't stop on that. Teach them how to make money, how to manage money, how to care for the family, and all key aspects of life. These children will be great and successful in life because you have told them, the way to go. As a father, be a friend to your child. And that's, I think, number five. Be a friend to your children. Six, be a counselor and a guide to your children. And this will transform their lives. Children long for counseling. They long for guidance in the direction they need to go. And as a father, this is my prayer to you that you become a responsible father. My father was an alcoholic. 
And many times he failed in his responsibilities. But I remember one thing he told me when I was about four or five years old. Never drink alcohol. He was an alcoholic, but he told me, never drink alcohol. I drink it because I have no way to stop it. And to be honest, I don't drink alcohol. Because my father told it to me many, very, very many years ago when I was a little boy. And your children are longing for guidance. They are longing for love. They are longing for direction. The truth is children with a, f a father in their lives, a responsible father, tend to be very successful in life. Children without fathers, they either die early, get spoiled, and go astray in different things that don't benefit their lives. And it's my prayer for all of us as fathers that we, we become responsible. And I want to appeal you, to you also. In our country, Uganda, I told you 80% of the children have no fathers in their lives. They are looking for fathers. Men, step, step out of your boat and give direction to other children. God has given me the opportunity to care for many children. And I've tried my best to do it. But God is looking for more people out there who can take care of other children, become fathers in their lives. Either to be a father does not mean you have to be the biological dad. He's playing the role of a father in the life of a child. It will transform you. And mothers, introduce your children to father figures, men of character and who are responsible. They will help guide your child in the right direction. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. I want to close us in prayer. Father God, I thank you for every man out there. There are those fathers who are trying their best to be fathers, no matter what's going on. May you guide them and inspire them to do the right thing. And there are those who have totally failed. I pray that you wake them up to be responsible fathers. And it's our prayer that all these children that you've given us will grow up to be responsible fathers and mothers. And Lord, they too will be able to teach their children and their children their children and Lord will be able to break the cycle that has continued in society, in the world, in Africa, and we put it to an end. It's our prayer that, Lord, you help us to end the mess in our families by being faithful husbands, faithful fathers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.